the Happy Scientist Podcast. Each episode is designed to make you more focused, more productive, and more satisfied in the lab. You can find us online at bitesizebio.com slash happy scientist. Your hosts are Kenneth Vogt, founder of the executive coaching firm Vera Claritas, and Dr. Nick Oswald, PhD, bioscientist, and founder of Bite Size Bio. Hello, this is Mick Oswald welcoming you to this Bite Size Bio webinar, which today is a live episode of the Happy Scientist podcast. If you want to become a happier, healthier and more productive scientist, you are in the right place. With me, as always, is the Bite Size Bio team's Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Kenneth Vogt. In these ses sessions, we'll hear from Ken mostly on principles that will help shape you for a happier and more successful career. And along the way, I'll pitch in with points from my personal experience as a scientist and from working with Ken. If you have any questions along the way, put them into the questions box on the right-hand side of your screen and I will put them to Ken. Today, we will be discussing how to earn respect in your lab and in your field. Over to you, Ken. All right. How to earn respect. This, this kind of plays off something we've talked about before. That is a, is a huge issue in the scientific community, that of imposter syndrome, where you feel like I, I'm not respectable. What can I do? Well, that, this is a beautiful way to solve imposter syndrome. I don't care if you've been an imposter in the past. As of today, from this point forward, you're going to earn respect. Earn. So you don't have to worry about being an imposter anymore. You're earning it. <laughs> And you, there's a couple of different places to earn it. You know, as we mentioned here in the title, just earning respect right in your own lab with the people you work with every day is important, but also gaining respect in the wider scientific community, in the wider world, in your field, so that when people see your name, uh, you know, on the, on the speaker list, they go, oh, I want to hear from this person because they know what they're talking about. <laughs> so that's what we're going to jump into today. Now, I really, really, really wanted to have Aretha Franklin singing respect to y'all right now, but we just couldn't work it out technically. Nick suggested that I sing it for you. I suggested that Nick sing it for you, but uh, we both kind of opted out on that. So <laughs> you'll have to just, in your own head, hear Aretha singing respect. But now that you've done that, <laughs> let's talk about how you're going to earn respect. And we're going to start with the notion of be preemptively respectful yourself. Y your respect is not earned at the cost of other people. You don't, you don't have to take it from anybody else. If there are other respectable people around you, and hopefully there are, it's not going to make it hard for you to be respectful. So start off by just being a good respecter yourself. And that is, you know, you, you can offer to offer to help. You can be um, a collaborator in both in effort and in thinking. You can be in you can be a collaborative leader. That's again, this is all part of you being respectful to others. <clears throat> now, this means too that um, you know you may have to think about how you delegate things and and how you treat coworkers and all this, and, and making sure that you have assembled a team of people that, that you find reliable and are amenable, that you're amenable to working with. Um, <clears throat> so, so this way, the work that's being done by your group that's being done in your name automatically helps you. You, you will be more respectful as a result of the work that's done by your team. But that's only going to happen if you're treating the people on your team with respect. People that that are, and when I say on your team, they, they may just be fellow teammates. You may not be in charge of the team. But again, if you treat these others with respect, their reaction is going to be to be positive to you too. So you know that's that's important to do to treat others with respect first. That's the starting point to developing your own respectability. Another thing you can think about is 
nurturing the prof professional development of others. You know, you may have newer people or younger people on your team. Can you help them? Can you help them become respectable? You know, and, and sometimes that's just a matter of you kind of being their promoter. Um, you know, and I say promoter, I mean like in a, in a, um, you know, uh, the way you'd promote a, a music actor or a, or a, an actor say the, the the point is is that you're saying hey we really want to have bob or sally on our team because you know they do good work and you know they, they did great work on this in the past and i'm sure they're going to be a great additional here um it it allows for you then to provide some mentorship it allows for you to 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 offer uh recommendations of others and these again these are respectful acts on your part if you bother to do these kind of things for other people, if you help them advance in their own career too, um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a way of providing respect to others and you not create an environment where it's normal to show respect to others. And in fact, it might appear to be abnormal to treat you with disrespect. So it, it, it can solve a lot of problems in advance. Another thing you can do is, is when it comes to showing respect to others is going back to the past. It's not just about helping them move forward, but are you, do you show gratitude for the work they've, they've done that's benefited you in the past? And let's say benefited you. It, it might be they benefited you personally, but it might be they benefited your operation. They benefited your, your field or your, your, your area of interest in research. Um, it, all of these things are worth showing gratitude for. And when I say show it, it means you, somebody else has to notice that you're grateful. It can't just be a nice warm feeling you have inside, although that's a good place to start, but you need to express it. You got to put it out there. Let people know that you're grateful for the contribution that they're making, and they will tend toward showing their gratitude for the contributions that you make. So it, some of this may be kind of like brain training for yourself. If, if your natural leaning is to be negative, um, to look for problems. Um, now I'm not, and I'm not calling that out as being bad. Understand what I'm saying? Negative is not the same as bad. And maybe you are the, maybe you're the person in the group that does look for problems and somebody needs, needs to do that. But is that all you do? You're going to find that it's a lot easier to to show respect to others and to be grateful to others if you're not in that mode 24-7. Every once in a while, you get to be happy. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> and you can determine to be happy. Um, that's not something that's like, well, I have to have the data to prove that I should be happy first. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can be happy in your work environment right now. And part of what will help that is if you make it a more pleasant environment for others, well, then they're going to tend to make it a more pleasant environment for you. And it just becomes a, an upward cycle that, that, that gets better and better. Of course, one of, one of the things, too, about this is if you're going to show respect to others, it's got to be real. You, it's got to be genuine. Don't, don't, don't try to demonstrate respect that you don't actually feel. If you've got somebody on your team that is just a, just messes up on a regular basis and you're praising them for how steadfast and reliable they are, well, that's, that's disingenuous and it will show. It'll come through that way and it doesn't work. But if you bother to look at, well, where can I praise this person? Or where can I, you know, they, they always, they, they always show up for work. You know, they, they they're always willing to you know do the cleanup they're if you can find something genuine something real that you can say you know what that's a good thing we do need we do need somebody that'll take notes in a meeting you know and then they always are willing to do it that that's great now if you have somebody that's like there's nothing nothing respectable about anything they do ever why are they in your lab? <laughs> Why are they on your team? You know, you, you, you ought to look at that and see if there's something you can do about that. But it may be that they just need some help. They need some mentoring. And it's, it's a good thing if you can offer that and help them. 
so uh, there was this quote from Maya Angelou that I thought was was really interesting. And it talks about how others react to you. She said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. If you made them feel like they were respected, if you bothered to find something about them that you could respect, that's going to stick with them for a long time. And it it may really turn things around. If you've had somebody that's a problem person for you and you thought, well, I'm never going to get respect out of this person, so why should I bother to respect them? Well, the reason you should bother is because it can turn things around. So it's it's worth taking that step. So, okay, enough about respecting others. Let's get down to you being respected. So the first thing you have to do if you want to be respected is you have to be respectable. Personally, <laughs> I mean, that may sound obvious, but sometimes we miss that. We so want the result that we forget that we play a part in that. Because the idea of others respecting you, well, that's up to them. You know, they, they have to choose to respect me, right? But you can influence that. And one of the ways you influence it is by having confidence. If you are confident, others will pick up on that. It's contagious. And they'll start to believe you. They will start to believe in your power. And others will notice that they believe in your power. And it'll show up. And if if your objective is not to t- take control of everybody, but your objective is to be, to be respectable, well, it's going to be that much easier. If, you want, if you're constantly rolling over people, you know, it's, it, it's one thing to be confident. It's another thing to be arrogant. So I'm talking about just genuine confidence that there's a basis for this. Arrogance is what people do to hide their lack of confidence. So, you know, s- stick to being confident, you know, and think about, you know, think before you speak so that you can speak with authority when you do speak. Think about the other ways that we communicate. It's not always about language. Sometimes it's about, it's about our body language. So it's about the environment we're in, it's about our attitude or, you know, are we always acting rushed? Are we always acting stressed? Those things take away from a demonstration of confidence. But if you demonstrate you're confident and it's, and it's validly so that you're confident because you actually do know what you're doing. And by the way, you probably do. So cut yourself a little slack. (laughs) Um, But once you, once you do have something figured out, you want to let the world know that that you haven't figured out. Another thing you can do to, to improve your respectability is to communicate well. So one of the one of the big things about communicating well is the part that a lot of folks believe out. That is you have to stop talking and start listening. It's like, oh that communication was about me getting something across. Yes, but it, it's communication is an interaction. So you have to you have to listen to the to the people you're speaking to also. You gotta get feedback from them. You gotta you gotta find out did I actually did my point actually land? Did I get it across? And you can tell that by listening. So sometimes and in you know in the scientific setting, the, this is an important thing that has to happen. Sometimes someone has an opposing view. Well, that's great. Let's examine opposing views. Let's examine your view. Let's examine their view. Let's let's put it all out there in the light. And if you're willing to have your views be challenged, again, that's going to increase your respectability. If you're willing to look at flaws in your views and to improve them and to, to reshape things, that that, again, improves your personal respectability. Another thing you can do if you wish to be respectable is manage your time well. Now, that seems a little outside of things because it doesn't really have to do with the specific things you're doing. But do you get things done? Do you deliver on your commitments? Um, And if you do that, how do you communicate it? Do you communicate it by being the smug person who's always sitting there in a conference room first for everybody else gets there and just looking around like, well, nice of you all to show up. You know, 
so you lose the benefit of the fact that you respected their time by being there early by taking something away from them, for instance, in that in that setting. But you know, be prepared for the things that you're there to do. Show respect for other people's time, they'll show respect for your time. And there's other, you know, other settings where you're engaged with people that are that are on a schedule. You know, sometimes it's about meetings at work, but maybe you maybe you're meeting with with clients or sponsors or or others outside of the work environment. Again, do you do you show respect for other people in in how you manage your time there? And when you have deadlines, do you deliver on them? And do you communicate on you about your deadlines? That especially if they're at risk. If a, if a deadline might be missed, it's way better for people to be told that up front. The earlier they know, the softer the blow will be. And again, you're helping your own respectability there. If you hide it, hide it, hide it. And then at the last second, like, oh, we're not going to make it. No, that hurts your respectability, your personal respectability. And then it's hard to demand respectability when you're not personally respectable. Another thing you can find, again, this comes back around to communication, is follow up with people. Make sure you, you keep engaged with them. When, when that happens, again, they're far more likely to respect you. That you're, they, they don't feel left out. And they don't feel like you're hiding. Um, all those things improve your reputation. And improving your reputation helps you be more respectable. And again, it could be it could be simple things like responding to emails or returning phone calls. Um, it, all these things are available to you. Nobody else controls any of this part. It's when it comes to you being personally respectable, it's absolutely up to you. you it's and it's not to say that other people might not occasionally attack your respectability, but for the most part, that's they, they got other fish to fry. They don't have time to most people don't have time to just be tearing down other people. So chances are, if you show an interest in being personally respectable, most people aren't going to be shooting at that. And if they are, they're going to hurt their own credibility. So this when you've demonstrated enough, and somebody says. Well, I don't know about Bob. He never shows up for meetings on time. And other people are like, what are you talking about? He, he is, he's always there. He's always prepared. He, he always gets back there. But either, you know, that'll actually help reinforce your respectability when if others bring it into question, if you've established enough of it already, then every test strengthens it. All right. We're going to go back to a well, musical uh, reference here. This here is Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters, rock star. You may have remembered him. Uh, at one point, he he actually broke his leg at a show, and he came back out and finished the show. <laughs> and then the next show, you know, they had to cancel a couple of shows because you know he had a broken leg. But when he he came back just a couple shows later on a throne with a cast on his leg, singing and playing guitar. I mean, wow. <laughs> In his world, his respectability took a leap. He was like a super musician for for all this stuff that he did. He had every reason to just say, well, you know, I can't do it. Broken leg, got to heal up. See y'all in a couple months. And he could have done that, but he didn't do that. And the respectability he gained was was amazing in his field. So the same thing is can be true for you. I mean, if you want to get lab specific about your respectability, I, I want to be respected specifically here. Not just yeah, I mean there's I mean there's certainly nothing wrong with the, the fact that you are just respected as a decent human being or in things that are not related to your lab. You're respected as a as a partner or as a father or, or a mother or as a brother or a sister or you know, or or some something you do as an avocation, that's all fine. But here in the lab, how do you specifically get respected in your lab? Well, the first thing is to be open to learning. That is, know what you don't know. And this is not the same as feeling like, feeling like an imposter. It's either stuff I uh, everybody thinks I'm an expert in and I'm not. That's not what I mean. I mean 
when you actually put your hand up and go, this, this is new information to me. I want to know more. Now, if you, if you're newer in the lab, you're younger, uh, you may want to key on the fact that, look, I'm, I'm looking to grow. I, I, I need the inputs. If you're somebody with more experience, it's, it shows curiosity and you're part like, oh, that's something I didn't know about or something I'd like to hear more about. So the, it starts with, you have to be open to it. Are you open to learning more or are you so busy projecting? Well, I'm, I'm the expert here and everybody should check with me to find out if their ideas hold a, have any merit or hold any water, you know, that's, that's not going to help you. When you, when you can show that moment of, oh, that's new, that's interesting. That doesn't take away from you. That doesn't hurt your reputation at all. It shows that, that you're nimble minded, that you're, that you're willing to collaborate with others who have, who have ideas that are new to you. So you want to, you want to keep doing that. And in fact, you may want to get more, more specific about this in that make it a part of your own routine. You know, like maybe once a quarter, you know, a couple times a year, stop and do a self-assessment. Like what, what are areas of weakness for me? What are areas where I could improve my, my understanding, my knowledge, my experience? And, you know, be brutally honest with yourself. Now, you can also do this kind of assessment not just with yourself specifically, but with others, say, in your own lab. What are areas where, where we need to bolster things? Where, where do we need somebody to become the expert on this particular area? And again, you're creating a, a collaborative respectability now. And you don't have to necessarily earn it all personally. Sometimes it's just too much to do it all yourself. So if you can if you can help your group be more respectable it it will again reflect on you so don't don't worry about uh about competing so much with your with your direct colleagues i mean and i realize there's there is sometimes some amount of of legitimate competition like there's only going to be one opening for something and only one person's going to get it. okay that happens but but for the most part working together with people boosting them in their career will help you too. And if you have the reputation for being somebody that's open to learning, other people will start to cotton on to that. They will, they'll want to be that way too. And they'll want to be that way with you. And all of that, it, it helps convince them of your value in the lab. You're going to help them in their career. You're going to help their just day-to-day -day work be easier. You're going to be someone they can rely on, someone that they could go to. Uh, if, if need be in certain areas. Another thing you can do personally in, in your own lab is find a mentor. Is there somebody there that really is at the top, top of the game, at least in your area? And, and it doesn't have to be they're the best in the world, but they're the best in your lab. Well, great. Can, can you get some insight from these folks? And, but, you know, people do like to be asked for their opinions. And and even some people who are gruff might appear like, oh, they, they're not going to like it if I ask for their help. Y yeah, you know what? They probably will. And they may not always show it. And, it, you know, that may just have to do with the fact that hey, they're busy or, you know, they've got other stresses going on. But if you can find a way to say to somebody, hey, listen, when you have a moment, I could really use some pointers on this. Uh, that That can go a long way. And, and again, the fact that you're humble enough to ask for assistance is, is something that boosts your own respectability. And people will respect you, will respect you for pointing out that you don't know something. And they'll respect you more if they, if you point out they could help you with this thing you don't know about. You know, you, you're, you're getting an opportunity to get respect directly from an individual. And, and in case of somebody who's a worthy mentor, probably somebody who's whose respect is quite valuable. So why not? Another way to look at this is in a broader sense is can you build build a team in your lab? Can, can you really get that teamwork going? Because now it's not a matter of somebody being the mentor, but it's a matter of we all, we're all working together. We all have parts to play. And 
I couldn't do my part well if you weren't doing your part. And, you know, that's that, again, is good for everybody. And it, it creates an environment of, of mutual respectability. I remember watching a, a scene from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey when they were on the moon. And so and these are all, you know, highly educated people, highly respectable people. The fact that they've managed to rise to that level. And some of them are in positions of, of authority. Some of them are, have political power. Uh, but a lot of them are there were scientists on the ground. And in some cases, they were scientists that were literally physically on the ground. They had to do the physical part of the work. And so in this one scene where they're traveling to, out into what uh, this archaeological dig they've done on the moon, and the political guy's there, he's, he's in charge. And then there's a couple other guys, and, and you can tell, just look at these guys. These guys were captains of the football teams. They, you know, they're astronauts, you know. and they were showing so much respect to the political leader, the the doctor in you know the the professor, I wonder whatever you want to call him, the the PhD in charge of all this, and they they specifically said to him, well, you know, well he said to them, we're, we're really happy that 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 you're taking this so seriously and that you've you know it was a, something they needed to keep secret and that you've you know you've kept it secret and that that uh and they're like well. You know, we we know you guys are working hard on this and you told us to do it. So we did it. You know, <laughs> um, that kind of mutual respect among a very strong team of strong people. Everybody on that team was strong. Everybody on that team was a leader. But that came because they showed respect to each other and they earned respect from each other. So that that brings up the idea of paying attention to the group that you're in. How are they doing? How's the morale in the group? If you notice there's problems, there's weights on people. If you're checking in with people, if you're asking for feedback, you can see those things. If you're in a position of authority, perhaps you can you can help massage the environment. But even if you're not, even if you're just an individual that is showing individual interest in someone else um, that's on your team to help improve the morale, that's, again, that is something people will respect and you will find that respect starts coming in the back door on this stuff. You're not, you're not looking for the respect. You're not trying to manufacture respect out of nothing. And you're not, you're not trying to manipulate people into it, but you're just being the kind of person that they just will naturally respect. Even if they don't want to, even if they are somebody that feels competitive or uh, has self-esteem issues of their own imposter syndrome of their own, they won't be able to stop themselves from showing you respect. For, and more importantly, first for having that respect, then it'll start to show. Now, um, all this being said, you can give yourself away totally where there's just nothing left for yourself. So you still have to create boundaries here. There's a You still got to protect your, yourself and your own interests. It's not your first thing to think about. But at the end of the day, it's worth making sure that I still want to I still want to be noticed for the work I've done. I still need to communicate that I am a valuable part of this team. And, you know, it's fine. Take care of yourself too. respect yourself. When you respect yourself, you'll find that others will also tend to respect you. OK, let's get outside of your lab. Now it's a matter of the bigger world. Um, and depending on the kind of science you're doing, you know, your world may be small or, you know, intimate. There are only so many people doing what you do, or it could be big. You could, they could be very broad. So when you're in that kind of environment, sometimes you have to look at things that you might think are just superficial. Um, do I look the part? You know, am I what people are expecting to see? And I'm not saying that you have to play it a certain way. You know, it's it's not always about, well, they expect the white lab coat and they expect the the glasses and they, you know, whatever they expect. Um, because you know, maybe maybe you're rocking the mad scientist approach. Yeah, that's up to you. You know, pick pick your lane though and go ahead and broadcast it. And you broadcast it by by 
how you appear. And I don't just mean like clothes and, um, and things like that, but just like what, what presence do you want to have? And it's also not a bad idea to recognize there are prejudices out there. And, you know, we, we live in a somewhat male dominated world. Maybe women do have to work a little harder at it. <laughs> um, but that's, that's just how it is. Or if you're younger, or if you look younger, you may have to overcome that. Well, that's just how it is. You know, we can complain about the structure of society and, and uh, you know, be all indignant about it. But the fact is we have to start from where we are. So if things look a certain way, if society looks a certain way, we start from there. What am I going to do about it based on that? doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean you have to approve of it. doesn't mean you don't want to change it. Or you are doesn't mean you're not actively working at changing it. But you start from where you are. So <clears throat> know your audience and know what they're, they're going to expect. Take them to the next step. It's up to you to, to, to create the image that you want to create. And I will grant you that some images are riskier than others. But those riskier images may have high payoffs, too. So if you're willing to sign up for that and you're willing to take the lumps that come with it, fine. But if you just want to be, look, I'm I'm just going to be regular, reliable. I don't want to stand out in a negative way in any way. Fine. You can do that, too. It's you know, it's up to you. You take the you make the choice of how you want your profession to unfold and how you want to be seen in the world. Now, I personally am a big fan of taking risks, but, uh, you know, you got to assess your own, you know, uh, risk tolerance level. You know, we've, we've done some other talks on here on uh, the happy scientist about, about what risk means and, and how you should react to it. I mean, don't burn yourself out. Don't, don't burn it all out on one idea. Always have something in reserve. Yeah, you know, we, we've seen people that have taken taken the scientific positions that are way out of the mainstream, and some of those folks end up developing a reputation as a crackpot. But this side of that, they may rep develop a reputation as an innovative thinker. They may develop a reputation as a someone who's really creative in the field, and being open to to uh, an idea that is not the established norm isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially in science. Um, it's it's worth examination sometimes. It's, and it comes down to two, like, I'm not saying this is the way it is, but it's worth looking at that and seeing what, what is there to be learned. That, that kind of thinking is desperately needed in, in the world in general, but in science specifically. So you can be a part of that. So. That's what it's like getting respectability out there in the rest of the world. And it may go beyond your field. It may go, you know, does, does your field touch the public? Do you, do you want to have a presence in that way? Do you want to be someone who's being, you know, interviewed on, on CNN or Fox News? I don't know. That's up to you if that's the kind of role you want to, you want to have in the world. And you can, you can impact your respectability there by part of it is how you show up. What, a, what you choose to have the world see about you, part of it is taking risks, um, but calculated risks, risks that are worthwhile. All right. So what do you think, Nick? Well, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think it's quite interesting what you say. It's A lot of this sounds like uh, common sense, but I, I think that it's really good to dive into it and give people, uh, you know, or like together have a, just a, just think about uh, about what how important respectability, as you're calling it, is, and uh, and how to cultivate it. Um, in my mind, if I'm looking back, then it would be a bit of a you know a, you'd be thinking I want to be more respectable, and it get, can be a bit needy. You know, it's uh, oh, I want these people to respect me. What can I do? Uh, and but in reality, and along with what you're saying there. There's no scramble. You don't have to be needy about that. You just have to take a stand and decide how you're going to be. And the steps that you laid out there 
were, um, you know, just, I, I really love the idea. You just, you know, it starts with just being confident. It's like that. If you're going to love someone else, you have to love yourself first thing. It's yeah. stand up and just be the person you want to be. And even if you don't feel it, it doesn't matter. It, it's you fake it until you make it. Yeah. Um, and it, it'll come there. Um, <laughs> And I just wrote down some, uh, you know, the, about you, you wrote about uh, then, uh, so that's being respectable, but then actively respecting others, mm. um, you know, going out and uh, creating that reciprocal thing where people will remember you because you, I mean, it's really diff it's, it's, it's difficult because if you say, yeah, you respect other people, so they'll remember you. It's not like that. That sounds manipulative. Uh -huh. um, but what we're doing here is just creating and setting out the how we want the environment to be we be that and then then it starts to become that um and uh you know i wrote down some words confidence integrity reliability consistency connection openness those are some of the sort of uh words that came through when you were talking there that's that's ways to be standing in respectability or in an environment where you're going to cultivate respectability for yourself. Um, it's worth looking around at what you do, how you act, how other people perceive you. Um, a personal anecdote about that. Uh, I, um, ha, um, all my life, I've notoriously been kind of uh, late for things, not kind of late for things, late for things. <laughs> and, um, and I look around and go, well, yeah, is this how I want to be? This is what I've done in the last year. And, you know, it's like five, five minutes late or something. Um, do I want to, do I want that to be what people think of me first? You know, think right. of first when they think of me or even second. No, I don't. So is there something I can do about that? Yes, I can just stop being late or, uh, and you know, that sort of thing is just training, training yourself into actually respecting yourself and others more really mm -hmm. and, um and and then you get you know you, it's you retain the balance i find that not, i wouldn't say that i'm perfect at not being late for things but i'm better than i used to be i'm working on it <laughs> and i but, agree uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, he has done better folks <laughs> i mean uh but what it does i notice is it put, knocks me off balance less because if i'm late then i'm off balance uh, and um, and then I'm trying to make up for it, and you know that you, everyone will have their own sort of uh, characteristic like that. Mine has been late. Yours might be. It might be something else. But um, everyone will have their own. Uh, but it's, do an audit of yourself and where are you not being respectable to yourself, or respectful to yourself or to others, yeah. um, and that starts to create the itinerary of the to-do list of what you can do. To, to increase this for you. So you don't go out and get respect, you just attract respect. Um, and one other thing that occurred to me as well, I, I, I like that you touched on image and it's not that you have to look a certain way, but there is the whole area of personal brand. Yeah. Um, and, so, and there's the whole option as a scientist to take it to another level where uh, I know plenty, there are plenty of examples out there um, of scientists who have taken an active participation in some sort of platform like LinkedIn or Bite Size Bio for that matter, or somewhere else to, to stand and and give in that way, you know, to project a, a confidence, to project a know-how, to project a connect, an openness and connectiveness. And um, some of those people it is really open doors for. And so, um, that's what it's not it's not a, a must have but it's an option that is in easier these days i think um than it ever was to you know it's, you can just take make the decision that you're going to start putting out there what you know and um and cultivating that kind of tribe or audience or however it's called in various ways of thinking about it but i think that that's a whole other discussion but i think it adds on quite nicely to this uh, idea yeah. of of respectability and and cultivating that for yourself sure so i i, I really want to again call out the difference between being respectable and being respected um, if your focus is only on being respected you're just not going to get there you've got to take 
personal responsibility for being respectable. That's that's the starting point for everything. And then it goes from there. If you're not respectable, you're not going to get respect. That's just how it is. Yeah. There's so many of the things that we talk about on here are they end up being virtuous circles. And this is the same. And it's so easy to look on the other side of the circle going, respect me and yes. and, and ask for that and realize, but then realize that where you need to start is the part that you can do, which is be respectable and right. do things to respect other people. And then it start, the wheel starts turning and it'll come back to you. So, right. I mean, yeah. And there are environments where a position deserves respect, whoever occupies it. You, know, you respect the head of the lab just because they're in that role. But it's way easier for that person to be respected if they are also personally respectable. So if you're only relying on, well, I have the sheepskin or I have the job title, you're going to have an uphill battle. Yeah, I, I would say that that's uh, it's probably not particular particular to science, but it, it's yeah. um, but that's a a real pitfall is to to think that because you've earned respect from a, a, a position or a publication or or you know or whatever a Nobel Prize or whatever uh, <laughs> that you that you then don't have to be respectable or respectful. For other to other people and right. you kind of cash it in and just let it all go that's that's a real uh slippery slope and it's it's quite common it's, it's probably i was going to say it's common in science but it's probably common in every every um field human but, endeavor <laughs> yeah it's quite <laughs> noticeable in science because you get science is unusually set up for fiefdoms um mm -hmm. because you know you're a, you know effectively a private you, you know you're you once you get funding you're it's your own little fiefdom in, in a way it's quite closeted um and it, there's a relatively high um from what i my personal experience a relatively high incidence of people taking that respect and kind of cashing it in and uh n not maintaining the humility that's required for you know to keep that respectfulness going well yeah it's like do that. you want to do you want to be respected for the rest of your life or you just want to be respected in this moment? Yeah. I mean, you can, you can burn whatever capital you've got and then, then what happens later? So you know, it's, it's better to be more long-term when it comes to, to respectability. All right. That's all, all right. right. Was that your, was that your? Yep. That, that covers it for me too. Cool. So, all right. Well, Thank you to everyone um, for uh, tuning in to this Happy Scientist Live. Um, we've reached the end of the day, and thanks, Ken, for some great wisdom. Uh, and thank you for everyone listening in, whether that's today or on demand on the podcast. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the Happy Scientist, Scientist on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube. Listen back to our earlier episodes that are packed with equally or even more useful wisdom. And of course, tell your colleagues so we can help to spread the happy scientist. Also look for more happy scientist episodes in the coming months. You can find them listed on events.bitesizebio.com and on the happy scientist Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash the happy scientist podcast. Until then, good luck in your research and goodbye from all of us at Bite Size Bio, including Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Bye. Scientist is brought to you by Bite Size Bio, your mentor in the lab. Bite Size Bio features thousands of articles and webinars contributed by hundreds of PhD scientists and scientific companies who freely offer their hard-won wisdom and solutions to the Bite Size Bio community.